The inability by the government to raise enough revenue either through taxes or from its idle resources such as land and other assets, leading to a huge wage bill that is almost getting out of hand, puts the country in a precarious position if doctors' demands for a 300% pay increase are to be met. According to Ken Gishinga, chief economist at Mentoria Consulting, this would lead to an increase in taxation or else plunge the government into more debts through borrowing to fill the deficit, a move that will set the country on a perilous path economically. One of the biggest challenges we have in Kenya is we are spending much more than we are earning in terms of tax collection. In fact, they keep talking about a ballooning wage bill, which means that salaries are becoming unsustainable. So if they talk about a 300% um, percent increase, that's going to impact an increase in the, in the wage bill. But the revenue side is still the same. If you can challenge KRA to meet its growth targets, its target for revenue collection, then we can have a very good conversation about funding, not just the doctors, the nurses too, the lecturers, and all those groups. Because every time we have cyclical strikes, uh, it kills investor appetite for investing into Kenya. This notwithstanding, however, Gishinga notes that it is about time that health reforms were undertaken, devoid of political intrigues. The doctors are smooth and strategic. They can find other levers. Because this is not the issue Kenya faces alone. Even in the UK, the National Health Service, we saw the junior doctors striking a few weeks ago. And they, because of maybe increased uh, work, um, the increased amount of work assigned to them. But they found uh, a more swiver way of going about it. So I think it's a matter of what are the levers that the doctors can use that do not affect Kenyans but compel government to listen. Because you're right, the government, if it doesn't feel like it, you have any level on it, it will might not listen. But And this is where engagement is. The deeper your engagement, the deeper you understand what levers you can push and pull to get. And it happens in labor unions, it happens in the US, it happens in Europe, it happens in Kenya, it happens in airline staff. We saw British Airways trying to ground their, 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 their airlines because they're not being paid well. So it's, 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 it's going to be with us for the next 100, 200 years. The question is, can we find better ways of engagement without hurting Onjiko? With the doctor's strike now in its sixth day, it is not the doctors and the patients alone who are suffering, but the spillover effects to the economy have been enormous. People can't access health care, means people can't work productively at work. It means those people, companies are also hurt because their employees cannot access quality health care. For us to go on two months with this doctor strike, I think it's had a major impact, not just on the health care sector, but on the peripheries. Because if you go to a place like a Kenyatta Hospital, you'll find the m agents around, the kiosks around, the buses around, they're all idle because they depended on the patients who are coming, or the visitors who are coming to see Kenyatta. So you find it has a spillover effect on the general economy. Way forward, Gishinga knows that a strategy document for the next 15 to 20 years need to be formulated that will eventually catapult doctors to salaries that befit them as well as reduce the current huge gap between doctor to patient's ratio. Government can also be very strategic. Um, the government has very brilliant technocrats, the Ministry of Health, some of whom are former doctors, some of whom understand the plight of doctors. Can the government form an advisory council, a health advisory council of private sector doctors, public sector doctors, insurance companies, peers from other countries, Zimbabwe, the way we have an Africa peer review mechanism. Can we apply the same in healthcare? Because there is no reason why Kenya should not have the best healthcare system in Africa. It is crystal clear that reforms in the health sector will not take place overnight, as Kenya's frail economy grapples with, among others, unemployment and a ballooning wage bill. On the other hand, however, a healthy population is good for the growth of the economy, meaning that the government has to employ a balancing act to salvage the situation. Nicholas Nduwati, Channel One News.